there is a functional difference between them. Foam neoprene suits possess the insulating and buoyancy characteristics of a typical wetsuit. Shell suits function solely as a water-excluding garment with no inherent insulation or buoyancy. While diving, you control the amount of air in your dry suit with an inflator valve, which allows you to add air to the suit, and an exhaust valve, which allows you to bleed air from the suit. The most common location for the inflator is in the middle of the chest, so it will not interfere with the BC jacket. The exhaust valve is a low-profile valve that usually automatically vents air as you ascend. A common locator for the exhaust is on the outside of the left arm. When you dive with a dry suit, you must always wear a BC. You use the dry suit for buoyancy control and the BC for surface flotation and for backup buoyancy control. Thermal protection for your head is critical when you are diving. In cold water, you can lose a significant amount of body heat through your head alone. The general guidelines when deciding what type of diving suit to wear are for 27 degrees centigrade to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and warmer water, a skin suit is recommended. For 24 to 27 degrees centigrade, 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit waters, a 2 millimeter to 3 millimeter wetsuit or shorty is recommended. For 13 to 24 degrees centigrade, 55 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit waters, a 5 millimeter to 7 millimeter full wetsuit is suggested. As the water gets colder, you also need to wear a hood and gloves. For 2 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees Fahrenheit and colder waters, special training and equipment are needed. You should rinse a diving suit with fresh water after every diving day. Rinse dive skins and wetsuits inside and out. You should store your wetsuits on wide hangers especially designed for wetsuits or unfolded lying flat. If the inside of a dry suit is completely dry, you only need to rinse the outside of the dry suit. With neoprene suits, you need to rinse both the inside and outside of the suit. You should lubricate dry suit zippers with only paraffin wax or beeswax. Your dry suit with its valves, zippers, and seals should be inspected annually by a qualified repair technician. Clips enable you to attach your instruments to your BC. Without clips, your instruments will hang a foot or so below your waist as you swim horizontally. If you are swimming close to the bottom, your instruments can strike and damage marine life or be damaged themselves. A diving knife is a working tool used for many purposes. Its most important function might be to cut fishing lines or nets if you get tangled in them underwater. Knives are not to be used as weapons. There are many different styles and sizes of diving knives. For example, an underwater hunter might want a knife with a thin, sharp blade, while a wreck diver might want a heavy knife with a blunt tip for prying and pounding. You need a gear bag to transport your gear to and from the dive site and keep it safe, clean, and out of the way. To let others know there are divers in the water, you should use a special diver down flag. This flag must be flown from your surface support station or boat any time you have scuba divers in the area. It is also your obligation to take the flag down when all divers are out of the water. A logbook is your record of experience in the water. You should record the information from every dive you make in your personal logbook soon after you leave the water. It's a good idea to have a first aid kit on any dive trip. An underwater slate allows you to record data and communicate with your buddy. A goodie bag holds games, specimens, and artifacts. A spare parts kit includes items that can save a dive, and an underwater light is a necessity for night diving. Diving is an equipment-intensive activity. Remember that all this equipment helps you adapt to the underwater environment and function there as comfortably and safely as possible. Chapter 3, Diving Skills. To enjoy diving, you must be able to combine your knowledge of the underwater environment with the ability to handle your equipment under a variety of conditions. You must have the confidence to operate your gear by feel, because your mask will restrict much of your vision. In your Naui Scuba Diver Certification course, you learn the basics of diving, but you become a knowledgeable diver only through additional experience and further training. Developing good snorkeling skills is fundamental to being a good diver you must know the proper use of your mask, snorkel, and fins. Each time you don your mask for diving, you'll need to prepare it so it will not fog. 
The most common way to prevent fogging is to apply a few drops of anti-fog solution, rub the solution on the inside of the lens, and rinse the mask thoroughly. An alternate is to use saliva, but many prefer commercial products. The snorkel is usually attached to the left side of your mask strap if your regulator comes around your right side. The snorkel should hang so that the mouthpiece comfortably reaches your mouth and the top is properly positioned behind your head when in use. If you are wearing heel strap fins, adjust the straps around your heels for a snug, comfortable fit. Have your booties on when you adjust the straps. Making straps too tight can cause your feet to cramp. If the straps are too loose, your kick will be awkward and inefficient, your foot might cramp, and you might lose a fin. When you are ready to dive, you don or put on most or all of your gear at the dive site. Depending on your gear, your wetsuit is usually the first piece of gear you put on. Sit down when you put on your booties to avoid falling. Your feet must be either completely dry or completely wet for the booties to slip on easily. Your fins must be donned at the water's edge. Always use a figure four position when donning your fins. Steady yourself by putting one hand on your buddy's shoulder or on the boat's rail. Hold your fin by the side strap where the blade and foot meet, put your foot in, slide the heel strap up and over your heel. If you must move, be sure to move by sidestepping or shuffling your feet backwards. Never try to walk forward in your fins. To don your mask, position the mask on your face, slide the strap over the back of your head, and check the skirt of the mask to make sure that no hair is caught under the skirt. If you are using a snorkel, place the snorkel in your mouth and adjust it along the strap. Your fins provide you with thrust and stability in the water. You can move your fins in a number of ways to create propulsion. The most common is the flutter kick. When you kick with fins, your kick must be slow, deliberate, and wide. You sweep up and down from the hip, keeping your knees almost straight and your toes pointed. If you want to move faster in the water, simply kick harder and longer with the emphasis on your downstroke. If you bend your knees too much and pull your upper legs up towards your stomach, kicking as if you are pedaling a bicycle, your fins will slip back and forth in the water, producing very little thrust. On the surface, modify your stroke to keep your fins in the water. When you are kicking on the surface, make sure you have enough air in your BC to make you buoyant, so if you get tired, you can stop kicking and rest. You can also use the dolphin kick when diving. When doing the dolphin kick, keep your legs together and knees relaxed and alternately bend forward from your hips and then arch your back. This movement causes your body to move through the water just like a dolphin. Breathing through your snorkel while face down in the water will help you conserve energy. You breathe slowly and deeply, so you get good air transfer through the snorkel tube. Be sure to swim in a horizontal position and that the end of the snorkel is positioned at the back of your head to keep the open end out of the water. There are a number of dives called surface dives to get underwater. To perform a good surface dive, you must be weighted so you are neutrally buoyant at the surface. The key to a successful surface dive is to get as much of your body out of the water as possible. There are two common headfirst dives, the pike dive and the tuck dive. To do a pike dive, point your hands and arms at the bottom, bend forward at the hips, snap your legs up in the air until they are in a straight line with the rest of the body, and kick to continue your descent as soon as your downward momentum begins to decrease. To do a tuck dive, tuck your legs to your chest and at the same time rotate your body to a head down position. Extend your legs up into the air so your body is in a straight vertical line. For a feet first dive, position yourself upright in the water, spread your legs forward and back into a split position, kick your legs together and bring your arms forcefully down. If you are free diving before you do a surface dive, you want to breathe in and out deeply a few times before you take in a deep breath of air and hold your breath to do the dive. If you breathe in and out deeply and rapidly for more than three breaths, you lower the level of carbon dioxide in your body. This can be a problem. When you do your dive, you use up the oxygen in your lungs, but do not build up enough carbon dioxide in your body to the point that you feel the need to breathe. This can cause you to lose consciousness or black out underwater. This is called shallow water blackout.
Remember to limit your breathing to just a few deep breaths before a breath hold dive. Water can enter your snorkel through the open end from waves, from accidentally dipping the end of the snorkel in the water, and from doing a dive. There are two ways to clear your snorkel quickly and efficiently. You perform the blast clear by exhaling air from your lungs forcefully as you surface from a dive. The displacement clear uses the least amount of energy and removes the water from your snorkel by the expansion of a very small amount of air you exhale into the snorkel as you surface. You must know how to assemble your own gear for diving. Remember that as a responsible diver, no one is responsible for the proper assembly and operation of your equipment except you. To assemble your scuba unit, use the following steps. Pull the dust cap or tape off the scuba cylinder valve and check for the presence of the O-ring on the cylinder valve. Wet the tank strap of your BC. Pick up your BC with the shoulder straps in your hands and tank strap facing you. Slip the tank strap over the cylinder and move it down the cylinder until it is at the correct placement for your BC's tank strap. If the strap is too low, your first stage will hit your head during your dive. If the strap is too high, the cylinder will be too low on your back. Tighten the tank strap and secure it. Pick up your BC by the shoulder straps to see if the cylinder slips in the tank strap. If the cylinder moves, you must tighten the strap around the cylinder. Pick up your regulator and turn it so the second stage hose extends to your right and, for most regulators, the gauges and low pressure inflator hose to your left. Make sure that the ridged knob of the yoke screw is facing your stomach. Loosen the yoke screw and remove the dust cap from the first stage. Attach the regulator by slipping the yoke down over the cylinder valve. The inlet for the first stage of the regulator will fit right into the indentation on the cylinder valve and against the cylinder o-ring. Only tighten the knob until it's finger tight. Connect the low pressure inflator hose from your first stage to the power inflator on your BC. Hold your console so that your submersible pressure gauge is facing away from you, anyone else, or other gear. Slowly turn on the cylinder by turning the on-off knob counterclockwise. You will hear air pressurizing the hoses of the regulator. Then turn the knob back about one quarter turn. Look at your SPG to see how much air you have in your cylinder. With a 200 bar 3000 PSI cylinder, the gauge should reflect about 200 bar 3000 PSI. Put your primary regulator in your mouth, breathe out, and then breathe in to be sure that the regulator is delivering air on demand. Repeat the process with your backup or alternate source regulator. Press your power inflator button to be sure that air is flowing into your BC on demand. Press your deflator oral inflator valve button to be sure that air flows out of your BC on demand. When you have finished assembling your gear, you must make sure the unit is secure and not in danger of falling over. How you set up your weight belt is important because it affects your comfort and safety. A rule of thumb for the average size person in salt water with a full 7 mm 1 quarter inch wetsuit is 10% of your body weight plus 2 kilograms or 5 pounds. The length of your belt is also important. The excess tail of the belt that hangs out of the buckle must be long enough for you to grab it with your entire hand, but not any longer. With a flat 5 cm 2 inch wide nylon belt with no elastic or block weights, lay the weight belt straight with the buckle facing up. Bring the end of the weight belt up through a slit in the first weight and down through the other slit. Position the weight so it will be over or slightly forward of your hip. Then repeat the process until you have all the weights strung on the belt. Try the belt on to see the position of the weights. Be sure that you distribute the weights evenly on each side and leave the area that spans your middle back clear of weights. If you are using soft weights in a weight belt with pockets, distribute the weights evenly throughout the belt. No matter which type of suit you are wearing, be sure to sit down when donning the bottom portion. Don the bottom of your suit first, followed by your booties. The bottom of the legs of your diving suit should then go over the outside of your booties. 
If you are right-handed, don your weight belt by holding the buckle in your left hand and the free end of the belt in your right hand. Step over the belt with both legs, bend over, and let your back support the weight of your belt and fasten the belt. A buddy pair must don scuba units as a team. It is easier to don scuba gear when you work together because of the extra hands that are available to position hoses and straps. Grasp your BC by the shoulders as your buddy grasps the unit by the first stage and the bottom of the cylinder. Put your arms through the armholes, fasten the waistband and clips, secure your backup regulator and gauges to the front of your BC. After you have donned your gear, check to be sure that the shoulder straps are comfortably positioned. The cylinder should feel secure on your back. You must know how your buddy's equipment works, and they must know how to operate yours in case of an emergency. Check your own and your buddy's weight system to be sure you can easily release the weights. Check your own and your buddy's BC to be sure that you know how to power inflate, orally inflate, and deflate the BCs. Also note the number and types of releases on the BC. To check for air, make sure that your buddy's and your cylinder valve is almost fully open and only back a quarter turn. Check that your buddies and your primary regulator and backup regulator are delivering air on demand. Check to make sure that both SPGs reflect that the cylinder is full while breathing from the second stage. Check that all cylinders are secure in their tank straps. To check for gear and go, make sure both of you have your mask, snorkel, and fins ready to don. The general rules that apply for most boat and platform entries are your BC should be partially inflated and provide buoyancy. You should hold your mask firmly in place to avoid flooding or having it come off. You should breathe from your regulator during entry and you should make sure that the entry area below you is clear and sufficiently deep for the type of entry you are using. The only objective for an entry is to get you and your equipment into the water with a minimal effort. You can use the giant stride entry from a boat or dock where the distance to the water is no more than about 2 meters or 6 feet. Look at the water below to make sure that there are no divers below you. Hold your mask and regulator. Step out with one bold stride. As you step out, your trailing leg will follow behind you. Bring your legs together once you are underwater to propel you back to the surface. Remember to turn back to the boat and platform and signal to the dive master when you are sure that you are okay. Use the back roll entry when a boat is so small that if you stood to enter you could injure yourself by falling or you could fall out of the boat. You can use the seated side entry from the side of a swimming pool, a ledge at water level in a quarry, or from a boat dock. When you can walk into shallow, calm water to begin your dive, it is usually an easy entry, but some precautions are necessary. Shuffle your feet along sandy bottoms rather than stepping. Along rocky bottoms, step carefully. Rocks can be slippery. Don your fins when you get to waist-deep water. If necessary, inflate your BC and float on your back while donning your fins. Lie down and begin swimming as soon as possible. Some precautions for surf entry include all of your equipment must be securely in place. You must watch the waves continually. You must time your entry to coincide with a low point in the wave action. Avoid stopping in the surf zone. As you approach thigh deep water or if a wave is going to break over you, have your regulator or snorkel in your mouth and go underwater into the base of the wave. Your BC must be deflated when doing a surf entry so you can easily get underwater. If you are using a float, it must be trailed behind you. Steep rock entries from jetties or breakwaters also require special training. Find a rock at the water's edge that will be a good place to enter. With your gear donned, climb down the rocks and into the water. Time your entry with the surge. Some of the general rules that apply to all boat and platform exits are evaluate the exit area before getting out of the water. Stay to one side of the ladder. Never get under another diver trying to exit. Swim to the ladder when it's your turn. Hold on to the ladder and use the figure four position to remove your fins. If possible, climb out of the water before removing the fins. Slip your fin straps over your wrist or give your fins up to the dive master. Place your feet on the bottom rung of the ladder and stand up. Climb the ladder one step at a time, being sure to maintain your balance and support the weight of your scuba gear. 
When you do a beach exit in calm water, swim towards shore until you can stand. Stand up and remove your fins. Walk out of the water. When you are exiting through surf, you must concentrate on your exit procedure. Keep your regulator in your mouth. Hold your mask on. Never stop in the surf zone. If the surf is rough, swim until you can crawl out of the water on your hands and knees. Once you are clear of the water, you can roll over and remove your fins. With rock exits, you reverse your entry procedure. When approaching the rock you are going to use to exit, use the wave action so that the water movement will help you. There are a number of ways that water can get into your mask during a dive. For example, you laugh or smile underwater, which causes the muscles in your face to create channels that will let water into your mask. To clear your mask or replace your mask underwater, you must replace the water in the mask with air. When you exhale air into the mask, the air rises to the top and the water flows out the bottom. Point your chin toward the bottom to prevent water from getting up your nose. Put your fingertips on top of the mask frame and push in to maintain the seal at the top of the mask. Start exhaling through your nose. As you exhale, tip your head back slowly. The air will force the water out the bottom of the mask. You might wonder why you would want to take your mask off underwater. Generally you don't, but someone else or something else might inadvertently remove it for you. You must be able to calmly locate your mask and put it back on. Your vision without a mask will not be good, but you will be able to see. Learn to open your eyes without your mask on. When you are wearing contact lenses, you run the risk of losing the lenses if your mask floods or comes off. In this situation, keep your eyes closed unless you need to see to locate your mask. If your mask is lost, you will have to rely on your buddy to find it or help you surface. Whenever the mouthpiece of your regulator is out of your mouth, you must exhale a small stream of bubbles, 